Okay, let's have a look at lesson or unit two. The aim of this unit is to introduce you to the prevention of accidents and ill health, risk assessment, first aid and personal protective equipment. And by the end of this unit you should be able to explain why all accidents should be recorded, define the main purpose of first aid, give three examples of personal protective equipment and define the phrase risk assessment. Okay, reasons to investigate accidents. Well, why do you think? Take a minute to jot down some ideas. So pause this presentation and jot down some ideas why you think we need to investigate accidents. Okay, first of all, it's a legal requirement. Secondly, it identifies the factors that contributed to the accident. It's for insurance purposes because if any compensation payments are made, it's obviously the insurance companies that will pay out. It's for the enforcement authorities, for the statistical figures, and to prevent it from happening again, which really is the most important part of why we investigate accidents. It's the employee's responsibility to report all accidents to manager or designated person. It's the employer's responsibility to maintain all accident books, records and company report forms and copies to be kept on site and to report certain accidents to the enforcement authority which will be the health and safety executive or the local authority who employs the environmental health practitioners. Accident records. These are, this is the sort of information you should find in your accident book. The date of the accident, the time of the accident, name of the injured person, brief description of the accident, any witnesses, action taken by whom. Now, this is the person that would investigate the accident and they would write into the accident book the action they have taken after investigating the accident and the result of the action they have taken. So, to continue with the course, uh, accident and incident reporting. Now, wherever you work, there is going to be an accident book available. And if you have an accident, then it must be completed. Even if it's um, something that almost causes an accident, such as an EMS, then that needs to be reported as well. And the sort of things you need to put in the accident book is the person affected or the injured, their home address, person reporting the incident, all about the accident and incident, description of the accident and incident, and it must comply with data protection legislation. And RIDO, uh, again you might want to pause the slide and have a think about this, but what does RIDO stand for? Well, it stands for the Reporting of Injuries, Diseases and Dangerous Occurrences Regulations, RIDO, 2013. And it means that certain classes of injuries and incidents must be reported to the Health and Safety at Work Executive. Things like fatalities, injuries and dangerous occurrences should be notified to authorities by the quickest practicable means and have a full report submitted within 10 days. Accidents that result in the incapacitation of workers for over seven days must be reported within 15 days from the day of the incident. In occupational diseases, a report of the diagnosis should be sent without delay. All reports are made to the Health and Safety Executive and can be reported online using the appropriate RIDO form. Once completed, the form will be submitted directly to the RIDO database. Accident prevention. First of all, what is an accident? What do you think the definition of an accident is? Again, pause the presentation for about a minute or two and, and write down what you think a definition of an accident is. Well, it's an unplanned, uncontrolled event leading to actual or potential injury, damage or loss. So we've got no control. We can't plan it. Um, if we could control it, there wouldn't be an accident. Accidents and consequences, fatalities, major injuries, damage or loss, minor injuries, damage or loss, near misses, where there's no injury, damage or loss. Now, all near misses must be reported in the accident book. Or some companies do have their own near miss documents, 
where you actually put the near misses in those. But don't forget, if a near miss is something where you almost have an accident, but just manage to avoid it. So you need to put that in the near miss book, as I say, or in the accident book. Because you might be lucky in missing that accident, but the person behind you, perhaps a blue colleague, might not be so lucky. How can we prevent the accident? Can we remove the cause? How can we protect from the consequences of the accident? Can we minimise the consequences? Okay, accidents. Remember, always be on the lookout for health and safety problems. Always take the initiative. If you see something you're not quite happy with, or something you think has got the potential to cause an accident, then report it without delay. Don't necessarily assume that the accident have already been reported, or the hazards have been reported. People can cause hazards at work by smoking, using prescribed drugs, violence, stress, complacency, drinking alcohol, high spirits, distraction, haste, or using shortcuts. Always follow your accident reporting procedure and always tell your supervisor if you have an accident or injury and put details in the accident book. And that refers to all accidents regardless of triviality. Even if it's just a paper cut or a lost nail, put it in the accident book. Because if you don't, you haven't got any evidence that the accident happened, especially if something develops from that accident or from that injury later on. Accidents and injuries, common causes of accidents. Well, we've looked at the first two. Slips, trips and falls. Poor manual handling. Between those two, they account for the biggest majority of accidents in the workplace. Next, we've got misuse of abusive machinery. Working with sharp objects. Vehicles and horseplay. Ignoring instructions. So, always read and follow instructions. Labels on containers. Hazard data sheets which uh, items of information that come with industrial chemicals telling you what's in the particular chemical, what to do in case of an emergency, and contact details of the people that actually make the materials. And lastly, always read and follow your risk assessments. You should also be familiar with the health and safety policy and the health and safety law poster, which should or must be in all business premises. To assume you know about health and safety is to make an ass of you and me. Slips, trips and falls. Now if you can remember from this, this is the biggest cause of injuries in the workplace. And this could be due to slippery or contaminated floor surfaces. Uneven or damaged flooring. Uneven or damaged stairs. Wearing inappropriate footwear. Poor lighting. Human behaviour. Trailing cables. Other results of accidents, first of all, lack of information, training, instruction and supervision, which is a responsibility of whom? It's the responsibility of your employer. Also wearing unsuitable personal protective equipment, or another big cause of accidents, playing games or practical jokes. Drinking alcohol while working can seriously compromise your safety. Alcohol is a depressant, not a stimulant. It does slow your reaction times down. So if you're driving or working with dangerous machinery, obviously this could be a serious hazard. And stress. Stress involves the production of hormones in the body which have physical effects. Now what I'll look at in the next section is give you some detailed information on stress, the cause of stress, the reasons behind the stress, and I'll make one comment which you'll find is a bit strange, but stress is good for you. But I will qualify that statement.